Welcome back. Last week, we began the second leg of our journey together from Seward, Alaska to the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay. Together, we did it. 20 sprinter vans survived the Denali Highway and then up the Dalton Highway through Adigan Pass. Celebrating the journey at Galbraith Lake. Venturing across the border into Canada and now up to the culturally rich and untouched village of Tuktoyaktuk. Today's adventure shows you one of the most remote roads in the world, where the mountains are behind us and the landscape turns to tundra and permafrost, and your eyes can see for miles and miles where you see the world through a different lens and return feeling not quite the same. Today, we explore the remote village of Tuktoyaktuk and return to Inuvik to spend more time exploring. Thank you for joining us on another adventure through Canada. We decided to make the trip to Tuktoyaktuk a day trip. For reasons, we'll show you later. And the road getting there is rough. But the beauty around us makes up for the challenges. If you were to ask me which road I preferred to drive, the Dalton Highway or the Dempster Highway, two of the most uninhabited routes in the world? I couldn't choose. Each has its own unique characteristics. While the Dalton Highway has steeper grades and larger potholes, its destinations along the way are insurmountable. Galbraith Lake remains my favorite because it makes me think of prehistoric times and all the land around us that remains unexplored by man. However, the Dempster Highway is unique in its drivability. The road consists of more shale than the Dalton and there is a greater risk of flat tires. There's also points of the Dempster so redundant that it feels like you're stuck in Groundhog Day. The road goes on for miles and miles straight with no end in sight. Traveling the Dalton Highway is ever-changing. And no matter which road you travel, you come across people who are experiencing the journey in their own ways. We have seen everything from roller skis, topless Miatas, electric cars, and cyclists. All of which I admire. But the weather conditions in these parts of the world are nothing to be reckoned with. On this journey, we got lucky. With only one hailstorm that created raging wildfires, we had to escape in next week's video, but today we continue on. We all decided to leave for Tuktoyaktuk at our own pace. We wanted to shower and relax in the morning before beginning the long road back. Tuktoyaktuk is a remote village and we wanted to be respectful and not all land on the tiny town at once. We wanted those with us to experience this in their own way, with our guidance, but without influence. We encouraged respect while visiting the village and everyone went their own way.
Up until 2017, the fishing village of Tuktoyaktuk could only be reached by plane, boat, or a winter ice road. And now, with the construction of the road from Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk, access to and from the village is year-round. Much like Alaska, this is the one and only road to the Arctic Ocean in Canada. And before we take you into the village of Tuktoyaktuk, let's marvel at the landscape around us. The weather had been good to us. Alaska and Canada were experiencing one of the hottest and driest summers on record. This is not a road you want to travel in the rain, as the minerals in the dirt make it slippery, and the potholes fill with water and mud, and it becomes so deep that the possibility of getting stuck is high. For us, there was nothing stopping us. The lack of wildlife in comparison to the Dalton was apparent. Where the lands in this region of Alaska are protected, wildlife remains subsistence for surrounding villages that still remain reliant on caribou, fish, and whales. And this is the reason we decided to lead this group of 20 adventurous spirits up the Dempster Highway. To explore in our own way, yet continue to stay united. This part of the road flattens, and permafrost-filled lands surrounded by pingos embraced us on this journey. The pingos are a unique geological formation. A pingo is a dome-shaped mound consisting of a layer of soil over a large core of ice occurring in permafrost areas. This natural phenomenon is a sight to be seen and one of the main attractions in this region. Home to roughly 1,300 pingos, Tuktoyaktuk has one of the highest concentrations of pingos in the world and these pingos can reach up to 230 feet in height and 2,000 feet in diameter, with the largest pingo standing 15 stories high. When entering into Tuktoyaktuk, it's important to remember services are limited. Locals have expressed the difficulties of enjoying their own areas. Originally built for whale watching, fishing, boating, and family barbecues, with the influx of tourism after the road was opened, they found it more difficult to enjoy the areas that remained theirs for centuries. While the locals are warm and friendly and open to visitors, they have a self-reliance rarely seen in modern communities. This isn't an area to dump your garbage or cassette toilets. It's best to remain self-contained and tread as lightly as possible. Consider spending money on local trinkets or take a tour to a pingo.
Hey guys, I don't know if you heard, but we're all headed to Grandma's kitchen for lunch. I'm sure Grandma will be happy. 137. She might bark at you, but she's nice. Say hi, Amber. And that one's Bella. She's a working dog, so she actually works. She sniffs out bombs in airports. Yeah. <laughs> she's very well trained. Been at the airport once? A couple times, yeah. I used to work on airplanes. What's this one's This one's Ember. Are you taking a picture of Ember? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We came up from Alaska. And they've been with us the entire time. So from Alaska to here, and then we're going to go back down through Canada and through Dawson City. <laughs> you know there's a girl named Bella over there? Oh, really? Really? Same name? We talked to the locals in the center of town preparing to hold a community barbecue consisting of local foods such as fish, whale, and berries. The locals invited us to come back the next day to enjoy the festivities celebrating Inuit culture. With a population of less than a thousand, the residents here survive some of the harshest elements in the world. Formerly known as Port Brabant, the community was renamed Tuktoyaktuk in 1950 and was the first place in Canada to revert to the traditional native name, which in this case means resembling a caribou. According to legend, a woman looked on as some caribou waded into the water and turned to stone. Today's reefs resembling these petrified caribou are said to be visible at low tide along the shore of town. I 
Inuit culture here is quite unique compared to other northern regions as they are one of the only Inuit cultures that had a steady source of wood. The Mackenzie River runs north and so does the driftwood, all flowing into the Arctic Ocean around Tuktoyaktuk. Most Inuit cultures living above the tree line had no source of wood and therefore built igloos to be nomadic and move around to follow their food supply. In Tuktoyaktuk, however, they built sod and wood houses to stay permanently. We enjoyed our short and sweet stay in Tuktoyaktuk, and so did our group. We were ready to head back to camp and share our stories of exploration.
The drive back was just as beautiful as the drive up, and I felt a sense of sadness enter, as it does most times when leaving a beautiful place such as this, not knowing if I would ever see it again. But the memories we created will always remain. That was fun. Anytime you see shots of the van with the drone, I'm the one behind the wheel. What's the difference in Canada and the U.S.? I don't know how to convert liters to gallons. <laughs> so I just guess. Yeah, I just select the, the maximum amount to put in. I feel like I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a, um, escape room. <laughs> Figuring stuff out. It's a puzzle. So how did you activate the pump? Push the red button. Push on. What? We were down to our last quarter of a tank of fuel. So let's see how many liters this is for three quarters of a tank. So we put in 93.54 liters for a total bill of 246.95. That's probably the most I've ever spent on one tank of gas. <laughs> so you had to guess? Yeah, I, I estimated about 250. It went to 246.95. Hey Todd, you're still dirty over there.
all of these cars are here because there's a restaurant around. Totally covered Every, in dust. Everything, everything, everything is in dust. You know, I'm afraid amazing. I'm going to spill it, putting it down. Is so. it an ice uh, Yes, glass? these are ice, so did you ice save margaritas. It from, where did you save it from? These are from uh, China Hot Springs. It's a great time. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. So you're celebrating with your ice glasses yes. on your... Yes. And they are delicious. <laughs> Thanks to Marion Nestor for making us margaritas. Awesome. <laughs> 
good time. We're gonna do two drawings tonight. The first one is gonna be for an Inhabit Design Work uh, shower mat. Oh, with the beer going over here. <laughs> <laughs> Six, four, one, three. Did you win it? Yay! 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 So cool. My ticket's over here. Nice. I do have it. Our second one is our stage three item from Inhabit, or uh, from Canyon Adventure Vans. And it's the Climate Shade Insulated Privacy Panel. Okay. Ooh. So it goes in front of your bed. Oh, that's okay, nice. Cool. That's, that's nice. Stir it up really well. All right, Mike, do your magic. Feel for the old ones. <laughs> dirty. Is it dirty? Is it a worn out one? <laughs> Is that your new daddy? Six, dog? three, nine, eight. Oh, yeah. oh that's early. That's a young one. Boy, that's a, yeah, that's a yeah. really cool. Wow. Yo! <laughs> Those people are gone. Six, three, oh. nine, eight. Six, three, nine, eight. All right. Yay! 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 Bonk shot! That's the second one. You know what that means, Donna? Yeah. That's the for second you, big prize. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Everybody here is oh, that's the only side. Oh, so much um, about how what you've you done for them. He went swimming in the show ocean. Them. Yep. Hey, quiet guy. Come along and you know, give us a grand tour free of cost, other than a few little pain in the ass. That one we're gonna be there next. <laughs> you know, we're changing it from 60 miles to 30 miles just to make you feel better. And, uh, <laughs> so we all kind of got together and threw something in the pot. There's the pot. There's the card. It's from all of us. Oh. And so thank you. Wish you well. Keep on putting out good videos. We thank enjoy you. it. Yes. Thank you thank so you. much. That's wait, a very wise man. One more item in a dusty Walmart bag. <laughs> well, we're not the only ones collecting dust. <laughs> we got to open that. Now, we did not count it, so I have no idea how much is in there. But you can tell by the way, it's, it's not all singles for Jim to go to some place else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's that was absolutely very good. How did you keep it so clean? <laughs> I know. It was in a plastic bag rolled up. And I assembled it today. This oh, afternoon. that's beautiful. Yeah. Also, oh, I gotta say, nice. Sherry wow. made the card too that you guys yeah, are gonna there you open. Go. Up. Yeah. yeah, very nice. That is Inner really band. nice. Yeah. That's great. Absolutely love it. Thank you. Oh, that was this is from Van Tyrement. Sherry uh, made this. <laughs> okay, next. Oh, you got it. You took it at Arctic. I'm, oh, I no, I just built it. Life is an adventure to savor and enjoy. You made this trip an adventure we will never forget. Thank you, Nico. It's a little card from each person. Thanks for the memories. I'm sure I'll be hearing about our adventure for many years to come, Ellie. Larry and Nance, thank you very much for chaperoning the Rebel something. <laughs> this is a great state. It's been an unforgivable experience. I will read these later. <laughs> I knew that you could actually plug in a big <laughs> rebel, and you can plug it in at an at, at Alaskan Walmart on top of that. Thank you very much. Briefing in Durango and me. Thank you. Listen, when you guys, when you guys come to Arizona, because you're going to come, then we're going to go out and get to do some exploring. Okay. Absolutely. We'll be there. Good. I hope so. <laughs> Okay, we, we, got, we gotta get a picture. Yeah. We go have a picture together. <laughs> okay. Should we do a picture together? Yeah. Okay, you let's do. After all of that fun, it's time to feed the doggies. It's a good thing we got showers here and all that good stuff. Yeah.
can hear the sound. <laughs> a little bit more. So, what have we learned today? Our journey from Seward, Alaska to the remote village of Tuktoyaktuk has been a testament to the resilience of those taking on adventure, to those whose lives in these small communities have reached acceptance. Navigating the rugged terrain of the Dalton and Dempster highways, we've encountered breathtaking landscapes, cultural richness, and geological wonders. Tuktoyaktuk once isolated, now welcomes visitors with warmth and hospitality, while reminding us of the delicate balance between exploration and preservation. Through respectful engagement with the community, we gained insights into the unique history and traditions of the Inuit people, leaving us with lasting memories of connection and discovery. As we bid farewell to this remote corner of the world, we carry with us a newfound appreciation for the beauty and resilience found in the unexplored reaches of our planet. Next week, we continue south and get ready to say goodbye to our group and prepare for our adventure back to Alaska solo. Subscribe to follow along and see where we take you next. Press the thumbs up to show your support. And until we see you again, stay happy, healthy, and safe. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>